Okay. We left off page 80. You go into a Hasidic shtibble, you'll never see anybody embracing anyone. Ever. Hasidic Never. Never. People don't even shake one hand. Embracing, never. 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 You ask your stolen friend. You ask him. Okay. 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 Page 80. Achak domos, as she is borer, man ki ish lodom as a borer. Bro mi ayin, hein sholoshak domos. He says the three premises that the world has a creator and that it was, cre that it was created from nothing. Nothing came about by itself. That means somebody had to bring it about. That means there has to be a creator, like I said. If there's a creator, what does a creator mean? There's a purpose in creation. Why did God create it? First, say, if there's existence, somebody brought that existence into existence. Correct? That's firstly. So whoever brought into existence, whoever, we don't know what that, whoever that is, it was, it was a purpose. What is that purpose? Right? Something you have to figure out. What is that purpose? Like I always say, figure it out for yourself. Would that make sense? Right? One of the 13 tenets of belief, Jewish belief, is you have to believe in prophecy. Right? That different the VMMs, that the words of the prophets are true. That's one of the 13 tenets. Ernie, you aware of that? Okay. You have to believe one of the, that... Divrei <laughs> Mediamemes, why? Why? What's prophecy? Fred, what's prophecy? What's prophecy? What the Balkans may do tomorrow is prophecy. Prophecy means God, communi God co communicates with people. That's, all, that's what prophecy means. Now, a person builds a $3 trillion lab and he says, go into, and any, the slightest degree of of not doing something right, you could destroy the lamp. You say, go in, figure it out for yourself. Does that make sense? So evidently, the one who built it and, and underwrote it, he will have the person trained to know how to function within that laboratory. Correct? So there's a creator created this, un, this unlimited world. Puts us in, figure it out for yourself. Could you figure it out for yourself? They're endless variables. Would it make sense to say he would tell us exactly what the objective is, what our responsibilities, what our limitations are, what we're permitted, not permitted to do? And now we have an inclination, that's the challenge. That makes sense. But to say he never communicated, tell us what it's all about, doesn't make any sense. It's totally, it's totally illogical. It's absurd to say such a thing. Right? So therefore, just logically, differing the VMMs, they ha have to be, God had to communicate with, with with, with human beings. Adam, Adam was the first person who had who God communicated, spoke to him. And he gave him, he gave him the charge. The Noahide laws, even though called Noahide laws, because that was later. Right? Because the first existence was, was destroyed. He had to be instructed what to do, how to behave, what to do, what not to do. All the trees you can eat from, that tree you cannot eat from. That was the instruction. He failed. Right? That's different to be a Then we have Moshe Rabbeinu is the greatest of the Nevi'im. He's the greatest. Now, why does Moshe Rabbeinu have to be the greatest of the, of the prophets? Firstly, Moshe Rabbeinu is the basis for Torah. What happens if you have a false prophet coming? He disagrees with Moshe Rabbeinu. He contradicts Moshe Rabbeinu's prophecy. So you say, well, we're pitting one against one. I'm a prophet, you're a prophet. Right? So why does Moshe Rabbeinu, why, why does he so surpass the ordinary prophet? He's the greatest prophet. Why is he the greatest prophet? No, why is Moshe Rabbeinu? Because God came face to face with him. Right? 
it's, it's more than that. The reason why it's the great. Now, how does anybody know that a prophet's a prophet? You know, Harvey walks in, he says, look, I'm putting up a 150-story building. I need funding, financing. God says I should come to you, and you have to give me the financing. Okay, I mean, maybe it's a way to go, right? I mean, is that a basis that we should believe you're a prophet? So you have to do two things. You have to perform a supernatural act, which is the equivalent of a miracle. You have to forecast the future, and the event takes place. So the Rambam asks, the Rambam asks on that, but maybe the prophet who's so-called performing this miracle, maybe it's sorcery. Maybe he's pulling the wool over everybody's eyes, because you need both. So the Rambam says it's no different than if two witnesses come and testify and they're interrogated, you could put a person to death. But maybe they somehow staged it and planned it, and they prepared for this, for the interrogation. Maybe you're putting an innocent man to death. The t answer is because Torah says, Al Pishnai made a Torah says, two witnesses is credible evidence. So if the Torah says that if a man performs a miracle, you don't have to worry, he may be a sorcerer. He may be a sorcerer. So you really don't know. Do you know if God communicated with him? So what's the basis why a person's a prophet? It's what I extrapolate my evaluation based on certain evidence. Why is a prophet? How do we know Moshe Rabbeinu is a prophet? Because we all saw God openly communicating to him. So Moshe Rabbeinu being a prophet is fact. Everything else is what's it based upon. Of course, the Torah says he's a prophet. But if there's no Sh Moshe Rabbeinu, there's no Torah. You understand? If there's no Moshe, that means it could be sorcery. So why do we accept it as that it's not sorcery? Because Moshe is said in the name of God, and we know G Moshe is God's spokesman. So could a prophet argue? So the moment you, you, dis you contradict Moshe, you know something, then you're nothing. You've already disqualified yourself as a prophet because maybe you're, you're a sorcerer. You're not a credible person. It's them. So therefore, it's a tenet to believe Moshe Rabbeinu is the greatest prophet. You following, Alan? Okay, good. But, 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 okay. but also, how, how come then mo, 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 uh, Aaron and Miriam didn't ask to make the Moshe's favorite when they... I mean, Hashem did come to because okay, they so created him to all the other prophets. They didn't understand his behavior. Yeah, but it wasn't... It, wasn't, it had nothing with... They weren't questioning his prophecy. They weren't questioning his prophecy there. They, it was his behavior. His behavior they were questioning. Who are you to question his behavior? Do you realize who you... No, yeah, 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 yeah. No, th not to put him upon him. No, it has no, that, no. You, what you're saying is incorrect. The reason why Moshe Rabbeinu had to separate from his wife yeah, is because... That, no, that's the pun him upon him. Dabi. He's not referring back to Sinai. He's not referring to Sinai presently. So it has nothing to do with what we're talking about. You understand? How do you know? How do you know it's God's words? Maybe That's he made it up. So no, no, that's not right. What you're saying is not right. The Rambam, take a look in the Rambam. He'll show the Torah, because he openly said, spoke to Moshe, go tell them such and such. We all wi we all heard it. We witnessed it. So therefore, he was already established as God's spokesman. Therefore, anything Moshe says. Moshe is the credible smoke, spokesman of God. Finished. It begins there, and that's where it ends. That is the credibility of Moshe regarding Torah. What? Years ago, a certain atheist says to me, if there's a God, why doesn't God speak to me? Okay, this was the time when Ronald Reagan was president of the United States. So I said to this person, I said, let me ask a question. When you pick up the phone, you call the White House, do you think Ronald Reagan will speak to you? He wouldn't speak to you. I said, if Ronald Reagan is not going to speak, why should God speak to you? <laughs> That's what I said to him. Who do you think you are? Because you have so much money, therefore he'll speak to you. That's not, a re That's not enough reason to speak to you. For God to communicate with people, you have to be at a special level. No, we don't. We, we, again, up to us. I didn't say we need prophets to help us. It's up to a certain point. At the t after the first base, of, the beginning, the first base of Migdosh, 
That was the end of the, the era of prophecy. There was no prophecy any longer. During the, during the second base, there was no prophecy any longer. What? Chag and Zechariah Malachi were the last three prophets. Esther was before. That was be between. Yeah, it's a separate discussion. We have the Torah. We have the Torah now. We have the Torah. That's our guide. The Torah is our guide. The Torah, we have Masorah. That's Torah Shabbat Pith. That was the whole challenge of Bayusheni. What, what were the Sadducees? They denied the authenticity of the oral law. You need the oral law. The oral law, that's the guidebook to be able to figure it all out. You reject that, then you have nothing. To be continued. That's a chapter. Ruach HaKodesh and Nebuah. In the Derech Hashem. Where did he come from? Yeah, right.